Welcome to Live Daf, your online Daf Yomi Shir. Shalom Aleichem. Welcome back to today's Daf Yomi, Beseches Bechores. Daf Lamed Hey, we begin at the Mishnah, which is five lines off the top of the Ahmed Masa. We begin with a story. Bezachar, it was a male, meaning a uh, ram. Bezachar Shel Rechelim, so it's a male of the Rachel family, basically a, a ram. And he's an older ram, walking around with long, curly hair. Zakin, older ram, Vesari Medudal, and his hair is all disheveled and hanging long and clearly in desperate need of a shave. Now, as we learned the uh, last couple of days, a bechur nowadays, oh, you have to wait until it gets a mum. Because if it's unblemished, a Bechar Tam must be processed as a karm, which we can't do today. So the Kayin, who is in possession of this Bechar, must wait and wait until he lands a mum, which allows him to just jecht him, like, uh, pretty much like any other animal. Okay, so we have this Bechar roaming around with super long hair, after, you know, sphere. Vera O Kastor Echad. So this... Um, Roman uh, fellow, this Roman officer notices a strange looking ram. He's wondering, he says, like, uh, what's the deal? What's uh, going on with this uh, animal? Why uh, such long hair? Umberlay, they told him, look, explain to him. According to Jewish law, it's a firstborn kosher animal which has special status, and uh, unless he gets blemished, this is what it is. You can only shecht him if he uh, lands a mum. So uh, playfully, this <laughs> Roman fellow, or perhaps mockingly, not al pigum. He took his uh, um, spear, but he clipped the. Uh, he nicked the ear of the of the uh, of the sheep, which halachically constitutes a mum. Now, Rashi explains he wasn't really intending on uh, inflicting a mum. He was just, uh, you know, sort of uh, trying to be funny and, um, you know, picked around with the ear of the Bukhar. It turns out that he made a mum and that mum qualifies. Okay, so they brought the... Um, the Shaila to the Chachamim. Uba Masa. They bring the story to the Lefnei Chacham and they allowed it. Because after all, the Bukhar now has a mom. Ra'a. There is a gear that says Ra'a. So the fellow notices Shaytiru. They allowed the. Uh, based on his. Uh, on his prank. Holach Vetsireim of Vetsaram Oznei Bukhar Sachir. So he went around looking for other. Strange looking, you know, uh, elderly uh, sheep. Other Bechayr, and he clipped their ears. This time he intended to change their status. Oh, Chacham in this case did not allow. They banned. They prohibited from the uh, moon being used as a green light for Shechita. And the reason is because, yeah, if it was an unintentional Mum fine, but if it was intentional, purposeful, we uh, we don't allow it. Very similar to what we said yesterday, that a person puts a mum on his bachar, you can't uh, can't use that mum to allow uh, shechita. Okay, so if anybody does mum intentionally, we cannot use on that. We can't, cannot use that mum for shechita. Here comes another story, very similar. Pamachas, a different time. How you tenoik is masachim basadi? Are these kids playing out in the uh, the outdoors? Vikashru, and they were playing with uh, with sheep. Vikashru, zinve tlaim zebaseh. And they playfully tied the uh, tails of sheep one to the other. And bam! Snip! Vinifsakas namish lechem hem. One of their uh, tails snapped off. Turns out, lo and behold, varyu bachar, the one with the missing tail, which now is a moon was actually a Bechar. And again, it was an unintended consequence of their playful activity. 
Ubamas of Nechacham Vitiru. Once again, Chacham allowed it. Roshi, Tiru, the kids saw it, they accomplished something, they were matter, they were all excited. Valcha Vakashu Zvonois. It's not as Bukhar Zachim, they went and did the same to other Bukhar. And they attempted to achieve the same results by having their tails clip off. Vashron, this time Chacham did not allow it. Why? This time it was intentional, Zakla, but this is the rule. Koshul Datoi. If he did it intentionally, also, that's not allowed. Shlele Dato, unintentional, is mut. Now, why uh, repeat the same, you know, halach and a different variation? Pamacheres, hoyu, tzriyu, tzricha. Both cases are needed. Both cases have a lesson. The Yashmin went kechab. We only discussed the case of allowing the Bukhar through the Goy's action. There's no concern, la Misrach. We're not concerned that it's going to cause him to do Isurim and, um, you know, uh, bring him to do other. Uh, Rashi says a guy anyways disregards the whole system. So we're not concerned about him doing more Yisurim of cotton by a cotton. If we uh, accept what he did, the Asil Misrach, it might bring him to do more, to do a Yisurim intentionally. If it worked this time, then uh, he might actually do it intentionally. Amalai, so perhaps in this case we should not allow it. So it doesn't come to do Yisurim, Yashmin and cotton, on the other hand. We only discussed the case of the kids. Which was allowed Mishum Delay Asi Mishum Delay Asi Lachlufa Begadal. Nobody will mistake him for an adult, meaning it's clear and plain and evident that it was a kid who was engaged in playful activity and there was no intended infliction of a mum. Nobody will switch it and confuse it and allow a Gadal to do the same Aval Abdul but if we allow it by the guy, people might think, well, you see, an adult who has intent, who has kavan, who has purpose, he let it do it, even a yid, so you can go and do it freely, perhaps, that will cause that mistake, and we shouldn't allow, we shouldn't accept the mum of the guy, hence both cases, to teach us that uh, in all these situations, if uh, it was confirmed as an unintended consequence, it's okay. Amar of Chist, Amar of Katina. Going back to the uh, initial conversation where they had replied to the guy who had wondered about the uh, strange looking animal, look, he says, uh, you can only use it if Haya Baimum. Haya Baimum has a ring of like unintended consul. It happens naturally. Haya Baimum. In which case, you, you didn't really lead the guy on. You didn't give him the cue to do it. Only in that case, says Amar of Chizr of Katina that it's okay. Loishana, it's only okay. Allah the Amalei Elmkin Hayabaymum. In their response, they said Hayabaymum. So you didn't give him the cue Avalam Amalei. But suppose he used slightly different language, which has a ring of go ahead and do it. Avalam Amalei Imnasa Baymum. But if they would have told him a bit different. They could only use it if the moon was done to him. In that case, Rashi says, Mashmai the Adam has a ring of intended action, like it was done by a person intentionally. So then there's a problem. Commander Amalai is Avid Bay Mumadam. It's like you told the guy, like instruct him to do it, and it wouldn't be okay. Amar Rava says, Rava, no, we're not going to dwell on these, uh, you know, semantic nuances. The fact is, you didn't tell him to do it. He just, you know, gave him the facts. He said, listen, we can't use it unless it has a mum. And he himself drew his own conclusions and decided to play around with the animal. doesn't really matter what words you used. Ah, my Rabbi Michti, look, Mimelahu. In any case, we're only allowing it if the mum just happened without intent, without uh, purpose. Melu, Mali, Haya, what difference whether you said Haya, Mali, Nasa, or you used the word Nasa, the fact is you didn't tell him to do it, and he didn't have a mind to be Mata the Bukhari just playing around. Elam, rather Nasa, whether you say Nasa, Nami, it also has the same status, and it's okay, just like Mamelu, but it doesn't matter. Zakla, the Mishnah concludes with a rule, and we know that when the Mishnah uses the uh, conclusion Zakla, it's coming to add, to expand the halacha, to include another case, another variation. What is it including this time? Zach Klal, Koshul Das Asr, if it's done intentionally, it's Asr, Asimah, what are we covering? Even if it's not outright intended. Asri Grama, it's not an outright 
straightforward action, it's just causation. So he intends on making a moon by attaching some food to the Bukhara's ear and having a, you know, attract a dog or bite it off and cause him a moon. Causation, hmm, that's also us. Shlota Das, on the other hand, was un- done unintentionally. It's motor. What are we covering with this? What additional variation? I saw it include the Suya Messiah of Suppose it wasn't a, a response to the guy's question. He saw just walking along with the guy. He says, Oh, you see that Bukhara? Look, we can't, uh, we have to wait until he gets a moment. You weren't trying to hint to him to do it. It's okay, even though the conversation was initiated by yourself. Mission continues. So again, a natural, accidental moon is okay, but intentional is also. Now let's say the Bukhara was chasing this fellow, scary looking ram. And he turns around, he whacks him, he calls him a moon. He bought us, he kicked him. Which generated a mum. That's okay. Raise a shaykh you can shaykh based on the mum because you weren't trying to place a mum on the Bukhar. He's just acting in self defense. Amr <laughs> Papa, that's only true during the chase. Why he was in danger. It's only true when he kicked him while he's being chased. It was a simple act of self defense. That's okay. Once the chase was over and turned around and says, Oh, you monster, boom. Who do you think you are? And he kicks him. Boy, in that case, the mum is not valid. Says the Gemara Pshita, well, obviously. Why would you think uh, that mum qualifies? It's, uh, it's not right mum that you're inflicting on him. Oh, the table, perhaps I can say. You weren't trying to inflict a mum, per se. You were just uh, venting your frustration. <laughs> Perhaps I would think, sorry, his pain and frustration, his trauma, he was expressing his anger at the animal. Sorry, the Kamatkar. He was just reliving his fear and he was expressing it at the animal. So maybe it's a valid mum, because it wasn't intended as a mum. Kamash mum, the point is no. During the chase, yeah, it's just an act of self defense, but afterwards, it's not valid. Kamashmah. But according to the second version, no, even later. Amra Papa Tev, don't think it's limited to the actual chase. Bishasrudifa, and only then it works. but after the chase is over, you can't kick him. No, I feel like Nabi, even after the chase is over. If he kicks him, he's uh, it's still okay. It's still considered a valid moment, you can shecht on it. My time, you know why? Sorry, they might commit, he's just remembering his trauma and his fear. He's just expressing his frustration and anger at the animal. And not really intending on being mata the bukhar, so it's considered a naturally occurring mum and it's mutter. Amra Buddha, mutter lahatil mum bukhar. This is especially relevant nowadays, so in order to um, sidestep the bukhar issue, you see the bukhar being born, you'll have to quickly clip its ear before his head emerges and it constitutes an act of birth. Mutter lahatil mum bukhar, you can inflict a mum on a bukhar, before. It enters the world before, um, you know, the uh, the head is born. Amar how do you do it? You have to get it right at the uh, at the get-go. Amar Rav, Gadya. So uh, a sheep whose ears come out first, clip it budni in his ears. Okay, so the ship's ear. Im as opposed to a sheep where the uh, lips uh, emerge first. You clap, clip it at the uh, at his lip. Sometimes the sheep as well on the ear. You can uh, say that it went out uh, sideways and the airs came out first, and uh, it makes sense. It happens sometimes. So if you get it that way, it's okay. Umrava. Okay, speaking about mumim. So what constitutes a mum, a blemish which allows the bukhar to be shaykh? It has to be a, a permanent blemish. It doesn't have to be very uh, severe, even the you know clipped ear, etc. But it has to be irreversible. It has to be visible, exposed, as we're going to see in the next paragraph. So some examples of which are like this. Suppose there's something with his teeth. Now while he's eating, so his mouth is mostly you know closed, you don't notice, it's not exposed. But Pai, when he uh, opens his mouth wide to call out, then you see the uh, mum. Avi mumma. It qualifies as a mum. It's considered exposed. My kamash, what's the point of Rav? We have a mission about this. Tanina, we have a mission. Achutin hachitzayna. So the outer teeth, shnev gemu. Which were, uh, you know, a bit chipped. Shenigmamu. 
which were a sort of thin split, or haprimias, the uh, inner teeth, shenekru, which were uprooted, they qualify as a mum. My time, why the inner teeth? You don't see them. Lav Meshom, apparently, because when he opens his mouth wide, the chippah, he makes you see it, so you see that uh, it qualifies. So why does Rav have to teach us the Allah, which we really have in the Mishnah? Amra Papa. You know what? Rav is just explaining the rationale. Rav and Ami Taim and Mrs. Mafar is just explaining the reason of the Mishnah. My time and Nekra Vamum, why? In fact, are the back uprooted teeth considered a mum, despite the fact that they're, for the most part, concealed? Because at times, they're noticeable. Mishum, the Chippai, because when he opens wide, now so you see it, says the Mishnah. So, Bukhar needs a mum. You're not allowed to afflict the moment. It's also the rise. If you do it, boom, we penalize you. You can't uh, use the moment. So, as we're going to see in the next sugi, the Kayhanim uh, was a little problematic there. They were, uh, it was sort of ingrained in their culture and their mindset. Unfortunately, they, uh, you know, uh, it was a big burden on them to have to deal with the, uh, look after this animal, raise it until it finds, uh, finds itself a mum. So sometimes Kayhana would, uh, cut corners and they were suspected of doing so. And the Kahana were lacking that modest, lacking, uh, you know, trustworthiness in this in this matter. Believe it or not, the Kahana were not to be trusted regarding Mumim. So in order to, for the uh, expert to uh, certify the um, Mum on the Bukhar the Kahana, we have to bring Eidus, testimony. Eidus. That in fact, it was an accidental, uh, you know, naturally occurring Mum. He didn't do it. It happened by itself. So the question is, who's to be trusted on this matter? Call on women. All types of blemishes are uyin, which are possible to come about love be the adam by way of human intervention. Meaning, if it's missing a leg, you know, it's a naturally occurring thing. Nobody, but if it's something that could have come about through a person, like a clipped ear, right? Roya Yisrael Neman. So the uh, shepherds, while Yisraelim, are to be believed that they happened naturally, but Royim Kohanim ain't Neman. But the Kohanim shepherds are not believed. Now, the Gemara will provide two translations to the uh, Halacha and the Tanakhama. Roy Yisrael. Does that mean the shepherd himself is a Yisrael? As opposed to the shepherd Cain who is not believed? Or Roy Yisrael means if he's a shepherd of a Yisrael employer, then he's believed. If he's a shepherd of a Cain employer, then he's not believed. We'll see that in the Gemara. So that's the sheet of Tanakhama. Rabbi Shimon, he says, no, no issue. You're speaking about the other fellow's Bukhar. Why would you lie about the other fellow's Bukhar? Your own Bukhar. Oh, that you're not going to be believed on because maybe you're, you know, cutting corners, you have vested interest, you're going to misrepresent. But the other fellow is Bukhar. Even if he's your employer, not to worry. We can believe your testimony that it happened by accident. Rav Hashem will Eimer, Nehmon will Haveri believe, fully trusted on the other fellow's Bukhar. But the Einemen Ashal Atzma Ibn Akain is not to be believed on his own Bukhar. Rameo Eimer, he says, Akain never. Hachash al Adavar, somebody who's hmm, suspected to have a uh, you know, lax attitude to something, to some matter, like the Kohanim regarding Mumin. He's not to be trusted, he can't adjudicate the matter, he can't testify in it. He's lacking in this you know, seriousness and commitment to this matter. He's off the case, which almost sounds like the Tanakama, right? Well, we'll, we'll see that in the Gemara. So back to the Tanakama, who says, Roya Yisrael, yes, Roya Kehanim, no. Are we identifying the um, identity of the shepherd or of the, of, the, uh, of the boss? We have two approaches. Rabbi Yechnon is one approach, Rabbi Lazar, a different approach. Chadam, I want to explain like this. We're talking about the identity of the shepherd. Roya Yisrael, the shepherd is a Yisrael. Even if they're working, by Kahanim, who are their employers. But since the shepherd was testifying he himself as a Yisrael, then why we trust him? Why not? Why would I think? I'm not concerned that the shepherd is driven by self interest, knowing that if he gives his employer the green light and he shakes the Bukhar, invite him to the barbecue. Give him a cut of meat, we'll give him a share the meal with him. No, we're not concerned that'll be drawn by that potential perk to testify falsely. No. But Roy Kayhana Be Yisrael Ainaman. 
So for a slight perk, he's not going to, you know, sully his reputation. But if it's Rei Kehanim, we're talking about shepherds that are Kehanim. So the shepherd is a kind by Israel, by a Jewish, by Israel, Israel employer. We can't believe him to give him the green light. You know why? Because the shepherd Kehanim is talking himself into some notion that he's going to end up with a Bukhar. I mean, the uh, employer has to give it to somebody. Who's going to give it to you? Look, if I give him a hand and I give him the green light, he'll give me the Bukhar. That's a big... Uh, he's going to land a huge uh, huge profit. Man, remember, he's thinking to himself, given the Tarach, the tarach no, since I'm the fellow that works for him, raises his sheep. Now that he has the ability to... Um, Reciprocate. Chances are he's not going to overlook me. We have the give it to a different coin. So he's motivated by that uh, self interest and um, he's going to try to facilitate the uh, heter on the Bukhar so that the owner will now have to give it to. Uh, we motivate to give it to him. Okay, so he hopes to uh, land the Bukhar, therefore he's um, going to re- misrepresent the fact. What in Kain Lechain? And the same would apply to a Kain shepherd working by a Kain employer. The Chashin Lechain. Now, in this case, it's not a matter of hoping for the actual Bukhar to be given to him because the uh, employer himself is a Kain, he's going to keep the Bukhar. So when I give him the green light, he's going to keep it, but. Gaimlin. There's going to be reciprocation of concern that perhaps this time I'm helping him out, testifying on his behalf, and tomorrow, maybe when I end up with a Bukhar given to me by a diff- from a different source, he'll come and help me out, and he'll testify that uh, the mum happened, you know, uh, a natural mum. Right? I'll scratch yours, I'll scratch mine, and we're good. So, Tanakama is concerned about all these self interest, you know, uh, motivators and um, therefore we can't take him by his word so again according to this approach for a small perk he's not gonna you know misrepresent so if he's a uh, Israel shepherd testifying on behalf is of his kind employer we're not concerned that he'll misrepresent just to get a little piece of meat but to land a real full bukhar that he might uh, that might motivate him. So if he's a kain working by Yisrael, he hopes to get uh, this Bukhar. And certainly if it's a kain to a kain, which they'll uh, help each other out in the future, we can't believe him. The next sheet says, not a problem. We're not concerned about all these uh, you know, elements of self-interest. The fact is, on yours you're not Naman, but on the other fellows you're Naman. Naman all shal you believed on the other fellows Bukhar, as long as it's not your own. Comes a third shita which says, "You're totally off." If he's a kain, we're totally off. We we can't we can't trust you. Which almost sounds like the Tanakama speaking. We'll see that later. Okay, so that's the first approach in understanding Tanakama. Again, we're not concerned about legima. We are concerned about a fellow who. Uh, has Zion the Bukhar or Goimlin. The Chadamar, second approach is like this. Roya Yisrael Vehein Kahanim Nemanim. We're talking about the identity of the employer. So if you're a Roya by a Yisrael employer and you're a Kayim in Kahanim, in this case Nemanim, it's the opposite. You are believed. Why? Oh, maybe uh, he has Zion the Bukhar. No, no, no. He's not going to give it to me as the simple shepherd. I'm sure he has better. Uh, more prominent, you know, uh, recipients to give his bachar to, uh, you know, the rub around the corner, the kain there, right? We turn to my base. May my the uh, simple shepherds think to himself, good luck trying to get the bachar. No way. Le Shabak, Sum on the farmer certainly wouldn't forego the opportunity to give it to a young Talmud Chacham, to a rav, a kain, Viabal didn't give it to me. So he's not motivated by any. Uh, 
profit or any gain, he knows he's not going to get it. But the Roy Yisrael, but let's say he's working by a Kayan, Vein Yisrael, the shepherd is Yisrael. In, in the Monas case, they're not going to be trusted to give him the green light to testify on his behalf. We are concerned about Lagima. He's hoping to share his meal with him and get some, you know, perk. So that's why he's not going to be believed. Certainly, if he's a coin testifying on behalf of the employer, a coin is not going to be believed. In this case, again, he's hoping to join his meal and also going one. I hope this time, next time, he'll help me. So that's the, uh, the new approach to Tanakama. We are concerned about Legima. We are concerned about Goimlan. But not about a fellow who expects to land the Bechur. Happy thinking. It's not going to happen. V'asab Shimon Lila Meimar comes the next sheet which says, No. As long as it's on behalf of the other fellow, we assume you're being objective and honest. Neman al shalchaveroi, ve neman shalatzmoi. Third sheet of Asar Meila Meimar, Achash al Adavar, Lidonev Lami Idoi, the fellow is a coin. We can't take you by your word. Okay. So you have two approaches to the Mishnah. According to the first approach, Tanakama, when he speaks about Yisrael or, or Kayan, Yisrael Nehmon, Kayan Ab Nehmon, he's talking about the identity of the actual uh, shepherd. Is Yisrael, he's believed, to testify about the mum on the Bukhar of his employer, who happens to be a Kayan. We're not concerned that he's uh, hoping to share his meal. That's no, just a, you know, insignificant uh, you know, gain, which he wouldn't, you know, risk his reputation about, but uh, if he hopes to actually get the Bukhar, so if he's a coin and testifying on behalf of his employer is a coin, and certainly if they're both, if they're both kind of, or if the uh, shepherd is a coin and employs a Yisrael, in which case, he hopes to get the whole Bukhar, or he help, hopes for a Gaimlin, for reciprocation, this time I help him, next time he helps me. But to the second approach, um, it's the other way. The uh, shepherd working by Yisrael is, is Nehman because he's not expecting the Bukhar be, to be given to him over the, uh, the rub down the block. But if he's a Kayim working by you, a Yisrael or a Kayim working by a Kayim he's not going to be believed because we're concerned about Legimo sharing the meal or Gaimu. Okay, now, in terms of Ramir, Ramir adds, which seems to add a new element here. A coin is not going to be trusted at all. Well, isn't he simply echoing the Tanakama's opinion? What's the point of repetition? So it really depends on these two approaches to Tanakama, right? So according to the um, second approach, that Roy uh, Yisrael means he's working by a Yisrael, but he's himself as a Kayan. Tanakama says he's Nehmon, despite the fact that he himself is a Kayan. So a Kayan can testify about a Mormon of if he doesn't seem to be motivated by self interest. Roy Yisrael, Khan, still Nehmon, that's Tanakama's approach, on which your mayor argues. If you're a Kayan, we can't trust you. Hainad Asr, Mela Mamer, comes to and adds, no. Hachash, Dalatavar. Kayanam who was suspected of being lax in this matter, Lloyd Nailamida. So we see a clear machlekas. Ellul Madam Rim Khan Baistro. Aneman. According to the first approach. That when he spoke about Royim Kayhanam Ainamana, he meant that the shepherd is a kain. And he's not believed. A kain can't be trusted. That's the Tanakhama's opinion. So what's Ramea coming to add? My Asa Ramea. When Ramea comes and says, Okay, he's not trusted. He's pretty much repeating the same thing. My Asa Ramea Lashmin. Hain Tanakhama is exactly what Tanakhama said. You can bet there's a slight difference. So, in general, can a coin be trusted? He comes to what? Walks into Bezden, testifying about his neighbors, uh, just a strange, random person's Bukhar. General question, can a coin testify about a mum on a Bukhar? We're not talking about an owner, nor about a shepherd, right? Nor about any case where he has some sort of, you know, possible self-interest, self-gain in mind. 
is a coin to be trusted regarding, you know, testifying that the mum happened accidentally and naturally. That is the point of Machlechus. Ramirez says, N-O. A coin is never to be trusted regarding mum and bachar because it's ingrained in their psyche. They're, they're not taking it seriously. Tanakam says, no. You can trust a coin unless you have reason to believe that he's motivated by self-interest. Which will taint his... Uh, his attitude. But otherwise, you can trust the coin like anybody else. That is the point of Machlechus. It can be the difference between Tanakama, who grants some measure of believability to a coin, versus Ramir, absolutely does not. It can be now to Rabbi Shubin Kapusoy. As for Rabbi Shubin Kapusoy, who tells us that in concept, the coin can be trusted. The son of Rabbi Shubin Kapusoy, Aymer, Bechor Bey Kayin. So if the Bukhar is in the Kayin's possession, he himself can't be trusted, right? But Sarukh Shnaim and Ashuk Lai Dalab need two people up from the street to testify that the uh, mum happened naturally. But technically you can get another Kayin off the street. The Kayhanam were not were not locked out. Completely they were trusted, I mean, if they're not motivated by self interest. That is Tanakama's opinion versus Ramir says no. Kayanam were Nakshad on Bukhar. They took it lightly, and you can't trust him. Okay. The next sheet is a machine little I feel a bnoi, I feel a bitoy. He says that uh, you can't trust the, the kain who has the bakhar in his possession to speak about his own bakhar, but you can have a family member testify that it happened fine, that it happened naturally, even though he's a family member. It's called it's called uh, you know, like uh, like in the Mishnah Shimon says you trust it on the other persons, so even though he's a family member who has you know, some vested interest and, in, uh, you know, they share expenses, they share meals, right? He's, he's part of the family. It doesn't matter. He's not the head of the household. The head of the household is not trusted. He's the uh, owner. He's the one that derives primary, primary interest. He's not Nehmet. But a family member is okay. The B'si Aymer. No. He says, I feel a sorrow. B'si Aymer, I feel a sorrow. You have a group of ten family members testifying. They have no Nehmet us. Because ultimately, they benefit from the Bechor that's going to be shechted here. Aim it no, they can't testify on the on the moon. But but as Rashi points out, he's strict on this matter, but according to him, you don't need two. If you get a stranger, an impartial, objective person, even one person is enough. So you have several shitas in terms of the Aidus requirement on the Bukhar. Testified that it, uh, there was no uh, you know foul play. According to Romer, a coin is totally Discredited, according to uh, Tanakama, only if he's motivated by self-interest, parent self-interest. According to Bishop and Kabasoi, we only accept aiders from non-family members. According to Rashbag, no, in family members. According to Rabbi no family members, but ultimately you just need one aid, not two. Now comes an interesting Shiloh. We speak so much, you know, about the Mum and the Bukhar in the hands of the Kayin, who's not going to be Naman, he has to find independent you know, witnesses. We have another instance where a Yisrael ends up with a, <laughs> stuck with an animal and he has to wait until he gets a Mum and run into the same issue. And the question is, who's going to testify about that Mum? Kemanoz lahod amar chizda. I'm a rab. We have a halacha or chizam rab. And who's it following? Whose shita is he consistent with? What's the halacha? I'm a chizam of katina, right? Safik bechar. Shirel be Yisrael. Sometimes the Yisrael could also end up with a bechar and stuck for a long time with the. If it's a safik bechar, he's not sure whether it's a bechar. So he keeps it, he holds on to it, but he has to treat it like it's a bechar, wait until it gets a mum. Who's going to testify about that mum? Tsaruch Shnaim and Ashuk Loyd Alaf. He needs to find two independent people out there to testify that the mum happened unintentionally. But he himself, the farmer himself, cannot be trusted. Come on, who she does this like? So it's following the shita of Shuvan Kabusai that. Just like by the Bukhar in the hands of the Kayin, you need to aid him. Here too, 
He's got to find two independent people to testify on it. Rabbi Nachman, I take issue. He says, no. In this case, Balaam Eden Olaf. He did not uh, find, you know, independent, objective, impartial people. Even the owner of the Israel can testify. You know, the Kehanim unfortunately had this weak, weak spot regarding, you know, Mumim and Bechir. It was just ingrained in their culture. They, they, they weren't very serious about it, so we can't trust them. But by ordinary folk, we assume that they're serious about it. And they wouldn't, uh, you know, misrepresent, even though, even though it involves, uh, you know, a lot of work and a lot of uh, burden to look after the uh, Suffolk Bukhar. But to him it's a novelty. <laughs> Bukhar, right? He wouldn't uh, dare tinker with it. And if he's testifying that there was a mum that happened, we believe him. I'll even prove it to you, says Rav Nach. Otherwise, you don't believe me, you don't agree with me. Maser. Maser Bain is a similar story, Right? Pick the tenth animal, it's Master Behema, and the owner, the Israel, has to hold on to it nowadays until he finds a mum. Whoever's going to testify on it? There's nobody qualified. Master or a mayor, I mean, made, oh, who can testify about the mum that happened to the Master Behema? Look, according to a mayor, all the Kayanim are in the same boat, right? All the Kayanim are to be trusted because it's something which tends to be a burden on the Kayanim. He's chashud, he's not going to believe, right? Even a strange Kayin out there, Kayin per se is disqualified from Edus on Bukhar. Okay, so the same exact concept can be imported to Master Behemoth, disqualified all Yisraelim. Because all Yisraelim theoretically have an interest in getting the Master Behemoth to get a mum, because it's something which affects all Yisraelim, all farmers. So all Yisraelim should be cut out from the system. They can't be believed. Who's going to be trusted a Master Behemoth? Nobody out there. Everybody's a potential farmer who has a vested interest. Otherwise, Masul or Meir, me made love. Who's going to testify about a mum to Masul Behemoth? Oh, apparently, the Israel owner. Because by Israel, we don't uh, attribute laxity to them. Says the Gemara, so the same thing would uh, apply to the Bechar, the Savi Bechar. We can trust the farmer. No, Masul is different. Masul, by the man, of course we trust him on Masul Behemoth. Because if he's really concerned about getting stuck with a Masul Behemoth for long term, you know what he can do? Very easy, very easy option. Before he uh, separates the Master Behemoth, he can just clip all the ears of all his, his whole flock. Before he designates it as a Master Behemoth, there's no Isra uh, is doing that. Before it becomes a Kaddish. The boy, because he wishes to avoid getting saddled with the Master Behemoth for long term, he'll apply a mum an entire flock, an entire herd. So since he has that easy alternative, apparently he didn't take advantage of it. Apparently he's not uh, too concerned. There's no reason why he would lie. So you can't really prove anything from Master Behem. Of course we can trust him. Allah Safak Bukhar, Allah But the truth is, the same question could be applied to Safak Bukhar. Also we're going to trust them, unless we're willing to accept the facts presented by the farmer at face value, who's going to be believed? Nobody. Because all Israel are chashad, right? Because once we establish that Israel is chashad, you can't trust any Israel. And certainly Kehanim. Who are known to be lax in this matter. So who's going to ever be believed on a Suffolk Bukhar? There's got to be a way to do it, right? Ella, Suffolk Bukhar, the Ramey, me made Allah. So perhaps you can say, yeah, maybe there's no, uh, no solution. There's no Takanda, you can't. Uh, there's no, it's not a solvable situation. I said Takanda, but none. But it's incorrect. We had a Mishnah where Ramey himself relates to Shechting a Suffolk Bukhar. Apparently there's a way out, but none. This was the case where there was a Suffolk Bukhar. One was given to the coin, one you kept. And the question is regarding Matanis, right? You have to give the Israel, etc., to the coin. The whole discussion we had. In any case, Shay Rasi Aimer, Kol Shachli Biat Koin Pata Matanis. Any Savi Bechor who's exchanged was given to the coin is Pata Matanis. Because, like, you gave it to the coin, took it back, right? Rameyer Machai, Mayor obligates Matanis. Clearly, Rameyer is referring to a Shkit of a Savi Bechor. Apparently, you can have Shacht it nowadays. We assume the mission is talking about nowadays. How'd you ever get the green light? Who testified? Oh, that confirms that the owner is, 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 good, is to be trusted. Why? Maybe he's trying to relieve himself of the burden of uh, having to raise this animal long term. Well, that's what, that's what we said. Kehanim were, interestingly enough, they were suspected of being lax and disregarding the mum situation. It was just ingrained in their, you know, his royal, on the other hand, uh, did not have this uh, weak spot. So therefore you can trust him. Itmar. 
Okay, so bottom line, who's going to be uh, testifying regarding the mum that happened to a Bukhar? Can the members of the household speak about it? Is it just the, a stranger? Itmar, of Nachman, Omar, Lachka, Shem, Leo. Basin like him, that the uh, Bukhar was in possession of a, of a Kayin, where the mum was discovered. Even the family members can testify, as long as it's not the head of household himself, who has primary interest, we can trust him. Rabbi Omar, Lachka, Shem, Leo, see? No, it's the opposite. We can't trust family members. Umi Amar, Rabbi Ahid, the Rabbi really disqualified quali- family members? Himself, Rabbi himself told us, Ba'alaf, so the owner, the, the kain who is the owner of the Bukhar, Ayyad, the man of Bukhar, sitting outside, talking to us outside the, you know, the barn. And uh, as this was going on, the Bukhar took a little walk inside. Nikhnas Shalmi went in unblemished. Vyatsu Chavli comes out blemished. Vyatsu so the people inside, we assume family members, can testify about the accidental nature of the, of the mom. So clearly, Rabbi allows family members to be on board. Ayyad, we have to modify it. It means, Kol Ba'alam Oymdim, we're speaking of all the owners, the whole entire family, the whole Cohen family was standing outside. And, um, and therefore, no, we're not concerned that any, any of them were involved. The if that's the case, why even discuss it? It's so obvious there was nobody there. But the tema, perhaps I can say, So who's testifying? The shepherd who was inside. Maybe we, we uh, should suspect him of you know, foul play. Maybe he himself did it. Kamash, on the point is, we're not concerned about the shepherd uh, manipulating them all. But the Gemara concludes, Vilchasa, Kamshim Gamliel, that we trust family members in this matter, Vidafka Bnei Bita, but only, you know, son and daughter, Abel Ishta, but not his wife. By the time Ishta Gagufa, the wife and the husband are one entity, and just as he can't be trusted, <laughs> she is on board as well. Ishta Gagufa, Ita. Amar Lira Pabla Abai. I have an interesting question. The Rav Meir, the Amar, Hachosh, the Latafa. You see, Rav Meir holds. The fellow is, you know, known to be lax in a certain uh, matter. Lloyd, though, Noigel, me, though, you can't testify, you can't adjudicate on that matter. Become our mayor. That's one mayor. We have another mayor, which we're now going to attach to this. The mayor says that if a person is uh, lax in one matter, he cannot be trusted in all matters of Torah. It's like a domino effect. Become our mayor, Choshel, Dover, Echod, Choshel, Chotter, so appearing together two parts of the apostle. On the one hand, Ramir says, a fellow is known to disregard one matter of Torah, it casts doubt on his entire commitment to everything. Number two, Ramir says, if you're lax in one matter, you can't adjudicate, you can't testify. So now comes a question. We established that the Kehanim, unfortunately, had a lax attitude towards the whole concept of, you know, Isra, putting a mum on the Bukhar. So now, what happens? They're not to be trusted on that. And if you're not trusted on one thing, there goes your credibility on everything. So how could a kain be a judge? How could it be a rav? The Ayanim in the olden days were the Kayanim. They were the leaders. Kayanim achinami lo'idayli dinas. You mean Kayanim would not adjudicate cases? V'aksiv, the Pasuk says otherwise. V'alpia, b'ya kol b'yvu chol naga. They were the ones who conducted, you know, financial adjudications, chol nega, questions of negaim. They were the rabbanim. Turn to the next Abed. You're right, Ramir only says we suspect. We can't, you know, we can't know whether they're being honest regarding the movement, but we never established that this particular, you know, Kayin is a falsifier. I never said we we're establishing Chazak. So therefore, unless you know that he falsifies, he doesn't lose his credibility. So Chathili, we don't, you know, we can't take their word when it comes to mumin, but unless you've proven that this particular kayin falsifies, he retains his credibility, and it can be the rough and the paisik. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so we start with the Mishnah, with the uh, strange-looking ram, discovered by the Roman officer who playfully applied a mum. They allowed it, the same with the tail that snapped off through the kid's playful activity, as long as it wasn't intentional Infliction of mum. Likewise, uh, when a fellow uh, kicked his uh, ram in self-defense, or uh, perhaps slightly afterwards, an expression of anger, that's also uh, considered a, a mum, which is matir. We spoke about uh, who's to be trusted regarding the mumin. Several shites, or mayor rules out the kahanam altogether. And so does Rishobin, uh, uh, and, and uh, so does the... Uh, As opposed to Rishobu and Kupusoy, who seems to be okay with Kayhanim, as long as it's not, you know, family members. 
Rabbi Shimon Lil says, as long as it's not the head of the household, we believe, and Rabbi Yisra says, even the Gansa Mishpach is not to be believed. We proved that in uh, some cases, even the caretakers believed, like by the Yisrael, was looking after the Bachar Suffolk, because uh, this issue was not uh, prevalent by Yisraelim. But an interesting Teretz had to explain the Pasuk Kal Rivich Al Noga, which were uh, conducted by the Kayah. All the best to you and Atzlacha Rab.